The 2004 Women of Achievement Award winners are a diverse group of women from a variety of backgrounds, but they all have the desire and ability to reach beyond the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary, and the results benefit the community in many ways. This year's winners are featured at Historic Hawken House in Webster Groves. Built by Christopher Hawken in 1857, this federal style home features a Greek Revival front porch, Victorian doors, and a Southern Atlantic side porch. Christopher Hawken was the eldest son of Jacob Hawken, a St. Louis gunsmith who manufactured the famous Hawken rifle. This rifle was used by American pioneers, including Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, and Buffalo Bill. The first parlor was the formal parlor, used only for special occasions. In the winter, it would have been closed when not in use to conserve heat. This room was called the second parlor and was used on a daily basis, much like our modern day family room. The elegant dining room features an iron stove with fenders for foot warming. In the kitchen, there are cooking utensils from an earlier time. The wardrobe and Victorian Empire Bureau in the master bedroom are typical examples of the period. The guest room has a knitted bedspread displayed on the high post bed. In the children's room, there is a collection of toys, dolls, clothes, and children's furniture. Located on South Rock Hill Road in Webster Groves, the Hawken House is open to the public several days a week. Against the backdrop of historic Hawken House, we now bring you the 2004 Women of Achievement. I heard an expression it's called Tikin Alum, and it means to repair the world a little bit at a time. And as I grew older, I thought, well, my grandparents did this and my mother, and now it's my turn to you know, make some small contribution a little bit at a time. She is a persistent person, and she wants to accomplish things, and she feels very strongly that one person can make a difference, and uh, she uh, she has done that in many things that she's done. My husband always um, assumed that my volunteer work, whatever cause I was promoting at the time, was worthy and as important as what he brought to the family was by supporting us, you know, and being there for us. And he always respected that. She started the St. Louis Breast Cancer Coalition group. She has served on the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Uh, she's been to the White House for uh, an award by President Clinton, and she has a personality that just won't give up. She, uh, she just keeps going until she gets it accomplished. We try to raise awareness of breast cancer issues to the public and to our government uh, officials because we want that to, to eradicate breast cancer to be uh, a priority. And so um, I've tried to make speeches doing that and as other people have. And together, I think that we've made a big difference. I know many times uh, she has called my wife because my wife had breast cancer and uh, she um, called and said, we need some help. Can you call a few of the politicians so we can get this thing rolling? And uh, she gets a group of people on the phone calling the state uh, reps and the uh, federal people and they get it done. As a citizen, I, I think it's your responsibility to be involved. Otherwise, if things don't go right, you don't really have anyone else to blame but yourself if you haven't participated. And, and I think life is fuller if you participate. I happen to be the mayor of Creve Car, and, and we uh, always look for good volunteers. And I know how good she is now, so we'll have to be working on her from the local standpoint. I thoroughly believe that one person can make a difference, and each of us can be that one person.
I volunteer most importantly because my Christian faith tells me to do so. The other thing is, is that I was raised in an environment of volunteerism. My parents are both engineers and even when they were working every day, at night they would volunteer with several organizations. And even though they are both retired, my mom retired 25 years ago, they still volunteer to this day. When I first met Lorna Godwin, I couldn't get over her height. But I found later that height is relative because she is a big person and it has nothing to do with her height. She gives and she gives and she gives. I never heard of Blackburn College before and I went up there one day for a tour and I absolutely fell in love with the college. I've been on the board for 10 years and six years ago they asked me to chair the board and I'm still chairman of the board. And that has been such a delight for me, and I've learned so much from doing it. Lorna is a longtime Girl Scout in particular, but I don't think it's just because it's the Girl Scouts, it's because she's giving something back. She's doing something to help someone else. I love the Girl Scouts because of its motto that we help girls grow strong. And I think it's important if we're going to protect our future, and thrive as a nation, we have to concentrate on our young people. So that's what I try to do in a lot of my volunteer work. Once I decided to make St. Louis my permanent home, I said, how can I use my communication skills to make a difference in the community? So for a short time, I didn't do anything, and people started calling me saying, can you do this, can you do that? And it turned into a business, which is Vector Communications that I own with Jessica Perkins. I have been involved in United Way since just about the time I moved to St. Louis in 1987. I am also involved with Forest Park Forever, so those are my other uh, charities that I love so much, as well as the Whitaker Foundation. And we give grants to organizations in arts and parks. And I love the Whitaker because it's my one opportunity to give away money instead of always asking for money. Lorna is, I think, fun-loving, but very professional and very serious about her work. You get so much back than what you give. And to see a smile on someone's face, to see a young person that you knew when, you, when they first started out in college, and to see that they're really a responsible, productive citizen, that makes all the difference in the world. I guess I can say the principles that I live by were taught to me by my parents. I've always wanted to be a PE teacher, uh, better known as physical education, and I did that for about 30 years. She is phenomenal at getting children to do what she wants them to do. Did some grants, then went my own business, and I founded the St. Louis Hills Learning Center, which was for children with learning disabilities. She visited schools, I think, where not much was being done for these children. So she just set up her own school. And that was in 71. In 72, then I founded Camp Happy Day. Camp Happy Day, which was the nonprofit part. And oh my, it, it was most impressive to visit her in the summer. We're the only one of its kind at the time in the country. And we take 80 children. The children are learning disabled, behavior disordered, uh, attention disordered, language impaired. She works very hard at her volunteer work and takes it very seriously. They have reading, then they have arts and crafts, then they have math, then they have physical education. Those that need it get speech and language. Friday is field trip day, and we try to take them to educational places. So We've uh, taken them to the Butterfly House, the uh, Museum of Transportation, uh, the Hall of Fame for baseball and bowling, uh, the City Museum, places that most of these children's parents can't afford. This is a great opportunity and a good self-esteem for them, and uh, we have ward night and their parents and grandparents, everybody comes, and they get a ribbon and they get a badge, and they, they really think it's wonderful, and we do too, and the satisfaction that our staff get, it's, it's unreal. I have no idea how many children she has served over the years, but it's a lot. All children need help. We can't just 
pick and choose who we're going to work with. In order for children to be served today, we have to label them. And that bothers me. But if it gets service to the children, I'm all for it. Otherwise, they don't get help, they lose, and they can't be self-supporting, tax-paying citizens. And that's what Camp Happy Day was really all about. By far and away, the longest volunteer service I've done so far is with Southside Day Nursery, which is known as SSDN, a family and community organization. The SSDN has grown significantly in the past three years, and Gina Hoagland was uh, part of the leadership and the vision in getting us there. Over the years, the organization has evolved, but its mission has always been around children, families, and community. When we were founded in 1886, um, we were founded as an employment agency and a child care center. Uh, also as part of Southside, uh, maybe indirectly, I've gotten involved a little bit with the Alliance for Social Entrepreneurship, ASC. Uh, social entrepreneurship is being concerned about a, a double, at least a double bottom line. Obviously business needs to make a profit, but this is caring about what social impact it has on the community. I've also become involved with YEO, which stands for Young Entrepreneurs Organization, and this is a nonprofit. YEO is about giving entrepreneurs, the people who are starting businesses or who have already started businesses but who are in an ownership role at a business, a place to go where they have a peer network. I got involved because of owning my own business and working all the time with entrepreneurs. I think it's very beneficial to be able to sit with someone who, who walks in those same shoes and to hear uh, the kinds of challenges they're having and to think about, yes, when I was in that situation, this is how I handled it. She cares deeply about the community. Um, she cares about the well-being of all of our children, uh, families, and the economic well-being of St. Louis. There are a lot of reasons to do community work, um, most of which is we're all where we are because others have helped us, and I think it's, it's appropriate and it's uh, important to give back and to recognize that, that we're only where we are because of those who come before us and that we have an obligation to help those who are less fortunate than us. Seniors really are growing in our uh, society today because of the kinds of advances in medicines and so forth and to see active seniors is really fabulous. Evie is a walker and an exerciser and a mountain climber. My husband and I love the outdoors. We love to go hiking. This is why she is as agile and as young as she is for her age and exercise is very very important to her. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary of the Senior Olympics and Harvey Brown and I were the first chair people of that. Joy Dunkelman, who was a woman of achievement, founded that program. Evelyn's involvement with the Jewish Community Centers, or called JCC, probably stems from the early 70s. Um, I guess the highest profile one was the Senior Olympics, which was the first time I think Senior Olympics happened in this whole St. Louis area. She chaired it and it was tremendously successful. And it was only a one-time event. It was to honor the 100th birthday of the St. Louis Jewish Community Center. We attract several thousand people every year in May to participate. For seniors, it, there's nothing like it. It was so successful, they decided then to have it a second year. And then the first thing you know, it was an annual year. And every chaired or co-chaired most of them, she now, I think, is, is co-chairing the 25th anniversary of the Senior Olympics. And another program that I think is fantastic on the others is uh, Reading is Fundamental. You know, she's been with it 12 years and they get up at like six o'clock in the morning, a group of gals, and they go into the inner city to help children that would never have an opportunity simply read and present lovely books to the parents so that these children take home the beginning of a library. They would never have this opportunity. She's warm, she's gracious, and above all, she's a real person. And I'm proud to say that's my friend. I've always been very proud of everything that I've been involved in. 
and I, I love the associations that I've made and um, it's been very rewarding. I think seniors definitely contribute to our society in a positive way. I have 12 brothers and sisters, and I was one of the oldest in the family. I was the third oldest. So I had a lot of responsibility for raising kids which for a while actually put me off having any kids of my own. But, uh, it, you know, I'm very, very close with my siblings. And um, when, I, when I did start to work, I found that I was always working at the YMCA or summer camps. And, uh, you know, I felt like kids were some, some people I knew how to work with. I got to know Polly when I joined Court Appointed Special Advocates, also known as CASA, of St. Louis County in 1999 when I joined the staff as the development director. Working with Polly is just a joy. She comes into a room and her enthusiasm, her ideas, her embrace of the mission and how to move things forward just inspires everyone who is around her. There are CASAs all over the United States. They all do the same thing and that is to recruit volunteers that speak on behalf of children who are in cases of neglect and abuse. They put in the time, put in the energy. It's often a very frustrating system and they stick with it and they really change these kids' lives and what they're doing is working to get these kids back into a safe, loving, stable home. I think one of the things that she really enjoys about being a volunteer for CASA is that it's working with children. It's working with a segment of the society that has no voice. We're talking about abused and neglected kids that a lot of times members of our community will cast aside as a damaged product or you know, no one cares about these. Well, Polly does care. The most exciting people are the people who are working on how to make where we live a better place. And it's not straightforward and it's not easy. And it's challenging and it's also very intriguing when you try to think about how you build a better community for everybody. And uh, I, it's been very rewarding to me and it makes me feel a whole lot better about the place I live. And I think that will, it does that for everybody. So I, I would encourage everyone to get involved to the extent they can and use the talents they have because certainly all these organizations need people who can also be committed about the cause and uh, have something to offer. And I think everybody does. So I just, I think everybody ought to get involved because that's where, that's where the cool people are. About 38 years ago, I was in the hospital for three and a half months as a result of an accident. I found out two things very quickly. One, that life is very precious and you ought to make every day count. And the second was, if you want to have a good recovery, it's essential to have good nursing care. I think her defining moment in life was when she was seriously burned in an accident and hovered between life and death for three months in a hospital. She was cared for devotedly by a nurse, Edna Malin. And Peggy says, there's no doubt that this woman saved her life. In appreciation, she established the Edna Malin Scholarship Foundation at the Jewish Hospital School of Nursing. I truly believe that they educate and train the kind of nurses we all need for this healthcare system. Very competent, very conscientious, and very caring. Peggy energizes and inspires people to reach beyond their grasp. This was particularly evident in the capital fundraising drive for the Scholarship Foundation. The mission of the Scholarship Foundation really appealed to me. They award interest-free loans to students with financial need who want to pursue a post-secondary education. 96% of them pay back their loan in less than five years after graduation. That money is immediately recycled to go to new students. And then the next way that we raise money is in the scholarship, where we sell gently used clothing donated by 5,800 households in our community. It's manned by a small paid staff, students who are paying off part of their loan by working in the shop, and 120 of the most loyal volunteers you'll ever find. 
when they went on this capital campaign fund drive, they were told they couldn't accomplish what they wanted to. But Peggy tackled the thing that couldn't be done and did it. And her co-chair, Chuck Cook, defined her as the heart of the campaign. I wish you could hear the stories that we hear and realize the impact that these interest-free loans have on these young people, not just young people. We have many non-traditional students. There are many people today who've had their education interrupted and get a chance and they want to go back and we're there to help them. And I feel good about that. The Down Syndrome Association of Greater St. Louis has existed here for over 25 years. And I got involved when my son Ethan and I moved to St. Louis. I first met Beth about four or five years ago when I began to uh, work with the Down Syndrome Association here in St. Louis. And I thought, wow, she is a dynamo. Initially, the, when I became a board member, it was pretty small board of directors, pretty small in terms of programs and very little fundraising, pretty much past the hat. But a lot of dreams, a lot of goals, a lot of ideas that parents wanted to see happen. And with my experience in accounting and business, I knew how to get them there. Eventually, we got our own office and hired an executive director, and now we're up to two paid staff members. And programs and newsletters and events all year round. She has great connections with our, two of our major sources of support, the St. Louis Rams and the St. Louis Cardinals, and just has become friends with even some of the players, some of the players' wives, um, and that has been very beneficial to the organization. Once things started rolling, the volunteers just poured in, and it's just it's incredible to see everyone pitch in for such a good cause. I don't know how she does all the things she does. Her job is an intense job. Uh, raising a son alone with Down syndrome is a tough job. Uh, the activities that she has pulled together for the Down syndrome association is, you know, is almost a full-time job. It is extremely interesting to me to be able to meet all these parents to share stories. There are incredible joys with raising children with Down syndrome as well as challenges. So it is, it is just always so nice to, to exchange stories as peculiar as some of them are. But that's been a, a very um, large part of my commitment is because of the other families that I've met and some of them just don't have the time um, or the means to volunteer, and, and I can, so I do. I am privileged to work with 62 wonderful volunteers that range in age from 40 to 80, and some of them can outwork me. <laughs> The Peace Pantry is a nonprofit organization incorporated on its own. We service about 100 families per week. Uh, when people qualify with us, they're eligible to come for food and clothing assistance once a week. We're kind of unique that we're a client choice pantry, meaning that we're set up kind of like a, a grocery store so that when the people are signed up with us, they're allowed to go through and shop off of our shelves and choose what they would really eat. I first met Connie at the food pantry and I was in need for some food and some clothing. I do know her as a person who helps everyone. They have bag day sales you know, where they sell clothing and they use all this money for the pantry. Our clothing sales generate funds for us, obviously, but the real reason that we started that was we felt that there was still people out there who could benefit from our services but were reluctant to come in and take it for free. But if they could come in and quote like be at a garage sale and purchase a bag of clothes or shoes or coats, whatever we have back there, you put it in a bag for a dollar, 
that we would still be meeting that need in the community. She helped me when I was so hungry and no clothing and she helped, told me the places to go to to get help. It is providing a valuable service in our community. I have those people that come to those bag sales tell me that all the time when I'm out there. We don't know what we would do if you weren't here. She's just got a good heart. She just, she's happy, go lucky person. Most of us are all so blessed uh, in our lives that we really don't realize it. I mean, with the cancer I've had, you know, I realized I didn't how much I took for granted in my everyday life. Um, and so I, my personal reasons is it's a way of giving, giving back to the community. Um, there's so many people out there that need help. Oftentimes you don't know how you're helping a person. I mean, it could be with a smile, it could just be a kind word that day, and maybe you've made a difference in another person's life. About five years ago, I was talking with some other foster parents and, and we were saying, gosh, wouldn't it be great if there were a home that's more like a family, not a residential facility, but just a home where foster parents could care for children and maybe a large number of children, but in a family setting. And I also noticed when I told people about um, our foster children, they said, what can we do to help? And I would always say, well, you can, you can be a foster parent because they need them. And everybody says, oh, no, 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 no. And it is a very special calling, you know, that's not for everybody. But I'd say, well, you can, you can do this. And I would tell them things that they could do to help us and to help the children in our home. And they did it. And I thought, well, what if we had a big home? And, and we got the community involved. I met Bez. She came to our Sunday school class on a mission. She had this organization that she came to talk to us about. It was called Angel's Arms. And what they were doing is renovating this entire house for the purpose of having a family live there that took in foster children. And it was not just ordinary foster children, it's the sibling groups. The sibling groups are split more often than not. And that's simply because foster parents can't take you know, multiple placements at one time. So, um, you know, you take a situation that's already frightening, confusing, and, and heartbreaking enough for a child, and then you say, in addition to losing your, your parents, your, your school, your church, your pets, everything you know, we're also gonna have to say goodbye to your sisters and brothers. And that just, I thought, that does not have to be. Beth is very adamant about her cause. She feels it in her heart. She comes in and she says, there is a need out there for this to happen and we're gonna make it happen. And what she is out there is to get other people to have the same feeling that they wanna make it happen too. It truly brings out the best in me and, and takes the focus off of me. And then you get to see everybody else do this and it just, the community all, it's pitching in, it brings out the best in them, and it's just, you know, it's the the most rewarding feeling of, of satisfaction, you know, and gratitude for what you do have. There you have today's honorees. Let's congratulate these women, these 2004 Women of Achievement.